So, okay, a um, piece I'd like to talk about is one of the first items in the exhibition, item number two, which is the second number of the magazine Merits. Uh, this was edited by the German artist and author Kurt Schwitters. Uh, I wanted to focus on Schwitters because he, I think he's one of the few people who actually was creating true concrete poetry before the term was created or invented. Uh, Schwitters was a true multimedia artist. He was equally known as a visual artist and a writer, and he even created some performance pieces that you could arguably call music, especially he did a 40 minute long sound poem in sonata form called the Ursonata. Schwitters was born and lived his life, most of his life in the medium sized German town Hanover. Um, and there he created a sort of one person Dada like movement called Merz, same as the title of the periodical. He had close ties with the uh, Dada artists and writers in Berlin, in Paris, and the Netherlands, and elsewhere. And he also participated in touring Dada performances in you know, Germany, Netherlands, and what was then Czechoslovakia. But he remained rooted in his home city of Hanover until he was driven out by the Nazis and went into exile first in Norway and then in England, where he died in 1948. So I want to show just a few examples of Schwitter's concrete poetry. Uh, this is from a book of his collected works. And although the term concrete poetry didn't really emerge until the decade after Schwitter's death, I think we can really accurately call these concrete poems uh, in that they really emphasize the visual and dynamic appearance of words, and in this case, letters on the page, rather than the meanings of the words. Uh, for Schwitter's Merz was a kind of multimedia collage art that involved piecing together art and literature from the leftover pieces of everyday life. He, he was known for wandering the streets and picking up things like advertising flyers, streetcar tickets, and saving them and using them in his Merz art. The word itself comes from the name of a bank in Hanover, the Commerz Bank. And he used that middle syllable in one of his early collages. Then he used that syllable as the name of his art movement and used it in German in all sorts of contexts. He used it as a verb, Merzen, Vermerzen, uh, just to describe his procedures. Uh, he used it as a prefix, uh, the way German works. Uh, Merzgedichte, Merz poetry, yeah. Merz builder, Merz pictures, uh, and so on. And it was also the title of the magazine that he published from 1923 to 1932. Each issue had a different theme, and while the first few issues were in a fairly standard uh, physical format looking more or less like that. Uh, after about the sixth issue, each issue was also in a different physical for format, of different sizes and shapes. And in fact, one issue was a phonograph record. So this makes Merz possibly the first multimedia magazine. So the first number of Merz was devoted to the Dada movement in Holland. And then this second number, was devoted to the letter I. Uh, so, somehow this makes me think of Sesame Street. Uh, this program is brought, brought to you by the letter I. So we have printed on the cover his I poem, Das Igedicht, uh, which consists of a single lowercase letter I. Uh, I think we can say this is a true concrete poem. It isn't about anything except the letter itself, its physical form, its presentation on the page. In fact, elsewhere, Schwitters gives us instructions for how to read this poem aloud. You know, you know we don't just say I, or in German, E. 
Uh, you'll notice this is actually a stylized version of the handwritten German I. And when you read it aloud, you're supposed to read the instructions for writing the letter. So it goes, Rauf, runter, Rauf, Pünchen, Drauf. Uh, doesn't sound quite as good in English, but it's uh, up, down, up, little dot on top. So apparently I was the first letter that German school children learned how to write. Um, and they would chant these instructions together uh, in typical old fashioned learning technique. So I think probably the ideal way to read this aloud would be to have a chorus of school children just saying, Ralph, Winter, Ralph, Pinchen, Ralph. So we happen to have another copy of Merit's number two in our collection, uh, so I can show you what's inside. Actually, you'll notice our copy belonged to the daughter Tristan Zara. You can see where Schritters wrote in Zara's name in red letters on the cover. Schritters begins this issue, uh, once you get inside, with a whole philosophical essay on the aesthetics of the letter I. He makes a great deal of the fact that I is the simplest letter, uh, and he develops a, an entire art form that he calls e-kunst, or i-art. This is a subset of merits, and it's a technique whereby you can select some simple element of anything, an image, a text, and declare it to be an artwork. So the I poem on the cover is the most basic possible I poem, uh, consisting of just a single letter, but he gives several other examples. Uh, another example is uh, two x-rays taken by a friend of his who happened to be a physician. And he points out that even though the original x-rays were taken by a friend, uh, he, Schritters, is the artist because he's the one who selected those pictures and declared them to be artworks. So this actually sounds a lot like Marcel Duchamp's idea of the ready-made. And when you uh, look across the uh, gallery at Tom Phillips' Hummument, uh, you can think back on Schritters' pornographic eye poem because the basic method is the same just taking part of a text to create something with a completely different meaning. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. I hope you have a chance to enjoy the exhibit, whether you come in person or visit us virtually.